So pushback, this is a brief review of specimen prep for TEM, uh, just to briefly go through the steps. So the, the end goal is to be able to generate um, transmission electron microscopy uh, of this quality from specimens that uh, are sent to the foundation. You will get the specimen in a biopsy uh, bottle, uh, fixed in formalin, and uh, when you take it out, it'll look something like this. That's a fixed specimen. And then it goes through a process, uh, a 29-step process to embed this specimen in resin. This takes about a day to do this if you stick with it. Many of the steps are timed and have to be done in sequence, so it's not like you can just start it and then leave. You have to be there through the whole sequence. So basically you rinse it, you post-stain it and post-fix it with osmium, you post-stain with uranyl uh, acetate, and then dehydrate in a series of uh, uh, ethanol uh, dehydrations, finishing with acetone, and then you embed it with uh, EPON, which is a resin. So there are uh, almost 30 steps in this process. And then when the processing is finished, you have a specimen and you place it in one of these forms up near the top, and then you fill these forms with uh, epoxy resin. And when it sets, it takes uh, it has to cure for 24 hours uh, in, a, uh, in a special temperature controlled oven. Uh, and then when, you, when it cures, you get a specimen that looks something like this with the fixed specimen in the top part of the, uh, of the EPON. So it will look something like this. Now you have to actually prepare the block for sectioning in an ultra microtome. So you start and create what's called a pyramid, um, and you do this by hand with a razor blade, and it has to be done very, very carefully uh, because the dimensions are very, very critical. It has to be an equilateral kind of pyramid where the sides are uh, at specific angles and very, very sharp. There you can see a, 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 a triangle being created, uh, and you do this by hand with a razor blade. So this is what's called the preliminary pyramid in preparation for doing a survey section. And then you face the block, uh, which is making this very, very flat. And you can see that the pyramid encompasses most of the specimen. Now we're going to take some thicker sections of this to do a survey because the actual area that you can examine is much, much smaller than this. So. This is basically to produce a survey. So after you have it faced, you take it to the ultra microtome, uh, place a diamond knife, uh, and place the specimen in this chuck here. The microtome is controlled by this control panel. Now, to, just to review some sizes, a uh, thousand nanometers equal one micron. One mi a thousand microns equals one millimeter. So the kind of samples that we use, the sections are uh, about 70 nanometers thick. So they're very, very thin sections. Our survey sections will be anywhere from 500 nanometers to 300 nanometers. Still way, way less than your typical histological light microscope sections. So you take uh, your diamond knife, this is a diamond knife, and you fill the trough here up with uh, ultra pure water and the sections when they're cut by this knife here, the sections come off. Uh, here you can see the pyramids. And you can tell the thickness of the, specians, the sections by the interference uh, colors. So like these are purple. And you have a graph that tells you what the different thicknesses are. So these are going to be uh, what they, we call semi-thin sections. These are about 400 nanometers thick. And we can use that for our survey sections. So we're going to pick these up. These are floating on the surface of the water. We're going to pick those up with a loop. Here is the loop. And we're going to place them on a glass slide. And then we're going to stain them with tolu toluidine blue and look at them under a microscope. 
and try to figure out where we want our secondary pyramid. I put these in our KEYENSK unit, which does the scanning, high-resolution scanning, automatically for you. It, it takes these very high-resolution scans, and then it puts them together and stitches them together, and you end up with a final picture stitched together that's very, very high resolution. So I can go in and look at any area here at very high power, very high magnification. Now what I need to do is I need to select the area of interest in the semi-thin section. And then I need to make my pyramid within that section and that's kind of a tricky part. So you have to build a pyramid on top of the big pyramid, and that pyramid should only be about 60 microns thick. So um, you can cut the whole specimen away, but then you waste the specimen. So I like to create this pyramid sitting on top of the larger pyramid, and that has to be done very, very carefully. Here we are, we use a special knife to do that. And there's the secondary pyramid cut into the surface of the main pyramid. And the depth of that pyramid, here's the pyramid right here. And this is about 60 microns thick. So it's sitting on top of the plane of the major pyramid. And that's another view of it. And there it is. So the reflected light off it, you can actually see how big this is the this is the actual size of the first pyramid. So it's a much smaller pyramid. And then you take that to the ultramicrotome for your 70 nanometer slices. Again, that's controlled by this controller that can give you some estimates on uh, how fast the knife advances and uh, all the parameters that determine how to get really good slices. Here it is, look, at this is what you see when you're operating the microtome, and here you can see the pyramid. This is the pyramid that I have to slice. So you bring the knife up to it and you start your slicing, and here you can see the different interference uh, colors. Um, these are all way, way too thick for an electron microscope. You want silver gray sections, which are about 70 nanometers. So again, these are more semi-thin sections, but there's what you want. These are silver gray. These are 70 to 80 nanometers thick, and the technique is pretty much the same. We're gonna go in and you have to break these apart. You do that with an, uh, an eyelash very, very carefully, and you tease these around, and then you go in with a loop these are higher magnifications of what, what they look like. Then you, to get ready for that, you take out your uh, copper disc. These are called grids. And we're going to place those sections uh, on top of that copper disc. There's a high magnification view of what the disc looks like. Then you're going to take this smaller loop. And in this loop is water and those sections are floating on this water bubble that's in this loop. Then you take this loop and you press it down on that, on that grid, and then you draw it. You can see that one of the sections is here. There's another piece here. And then you take them over to the staining sections. They have to be stained before you put them into the electron microscope. So there's a whole staining procedure that's uh, very, very rigorous to go through, but you stain them. And then you put them in the holder uh, for the electron microscope. This, this holder holds 12 grids, and you go ahead and take the grid and put it in the holder. This is just a, a spring-operated clamp. You put the grid in, and this clamps down on it. There it is in it. And then you take it, uh, you put it into your exchange unit. Here it is right here. And then you close the door, create the vacuum. And then when you image it, it looks like this initially. And then as you go in at higher mag, uh, you get a sense of whether all of this work was worthwhile 
or whether you have to do it all over again. Here we can see those fungal spores, kind of interesting. And then when you're done, you keep a grid log, so you keep track of where all these grids are. The grids are good for about 30 years, so I still have grids of work I did with Dr. Kosterton and Rick Schwartz uh, in our paper. I still have those grids and can go back and look at them at, at any time. So you place this in order according to these uh, letters and numbers, and you have a log that keeps track of this stuff. Then everything goes in a basket with all of the glass slides, the samples, uh, the, the, the grids, and any light microscopy that I do. And they're given a number, and then they're stored uh, by number so we can always find them. So that's uh, pretty much how you go about doing a TEM. Um, specimen prep. I don't know if it's of interest to you, uh, but if it is, I wanted you to have some idea of what's involved in, in doing this.